Okay, today we're going to be talking about uh, exponential growth functions. We're in 7.1 on page 478. So graph exponential growth functions, page 478 of your textbooks. Let's start with some vocab. We have an exponential function. which is the form y equals a b to the x. a cannot equal zero, and b has to be a positive number other than one. Okay. Uh, then we also have something called an exponential growth function. So if this right here is satisfied, then we have that. So exponential growth function. If a equals does not equal zero and b is greater than one. B is called our growth factor. It's how our graph is growing. And we're going to graph something, um, our parent function now. So we have y equals b to the x. This is your parent function. And let's see what that looks like. It goes through the point 0, 1. Then it goes through the point 1, B. And it goes up from there. So it's going to look something like this. Similar to graphs we graphed last chapter. So B has to be greater than 1. And this is, when we label it, F of X equals B to the X power. Now, with these types of graphs, we're going to have something called an asymptote. Which is the x-axis in this graph. And what an asymptote is, is it's a line that a graph approaches more and more closely, but it will never touch it. Okay, so it will never hit this x-axis right here. That's what this is saying when we say we have an asymptote there. If you notice, the graph rises from left to right and it passes through the points 0, 1 and 1, B. What about our domain? Well, domain again has to do with our x values. And if you look at your graph, now while it can't equal this line right here, our x-axis, it can equal any of my x numbers. That's a y value um, for my x-axis. That's when y equals 0. But it can equal any other number here. So my domain is all real numbers. Now, because it cannot equal zero and cannot cross this line, my range is y has to be greater than zero. So any number greater than zero cannot equal zero again, but any number greater than zero. 
All right, go ahead and flip your page and go on to an example with some steps. So example one, I want you to graph y equals 2 to the x. Okay, step one, make your table. So I've already created a table there for you, x, y, we're going to plug in numbers. Okay. And let's start with negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, 2 to the negative 2 power. Well, that's 1 over 4. Then we have 1 over 2. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. 4, 8. Okay. All things that we talked about last chapter. Step two is going to be uh, plotting your points. And step three is going to be to draw your curve. They call it a smooth curve in your book. Um, again, just draw a curve. So we're going to start with the point negative two, one fourth. Uh, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. So if we were to draw our smooth curve, it would look something like this. Now I'm missing one piece where I label my graph as y equals 2 to the x, or f of x equals 2 to the x. You can label it using either or, but you must label this uh, curve. Okay, so that's how we uh, graph y equals b to the x. Let's look at if we have a vertical stretch or shrink in regards to our graph. So again, remember, vertical stretch or shrink. Is when we're multiplying y equals a b to the x. So now we have something in front of our b to the x. So let's start with y equals 1 half times 4 to the x power. Again, look. 4 is our B value, so it's similar to the previous graph, but now, are we going to stretch it or shrink it? Well, because it's 1 half, it's going to do what to our graph? 1 half is smaller, so it's going to shrink our graph. So again, create a table. My X value over my Y. I would recommend graphing negative 2 through 3. Okay, uh, 4 to the negative 2 power is uh, 1 over 16 times 1 half, it's 1 over 32. 4 to the negative first is 1 fourth, 1 fourth times 1 half is 1 eighth. 4 to the 0 power is 1, which is going to give me 1 half. And 4 to the first is 4, so 4 times 1 half is 2. 4 squared is is 16 times 1 half is 8. 4 uh, cubed is 64 times 1 half is 32. Notice this pattern 1 over 32, 1 over 8, 1 over 2, 2, 8, 32. And again, we're going to graph our function. We're going to start at negative 2, 1, 30 second, negative 1, 1 eighth, 0, 1 half, 1, 2, 2, 8, 3, woo, 32, way up there. And draw your curve. And last but not least, 
we label our function.